So good morning guys, welcome back to another video. I am The Broke Patriot and today I'm at TH Detailing because we're gonna do a course, a three day course, it's like a three and a half hour course, three hour course on how to wash and maintain your car properly. So it's something a little bit different that we've never done before um, and I hope it's gonna be a fun video. I hope I'm gonna learn some things, which I suppose I am going to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. See you in a minute, peace. So guys, I'm here at TH Detailing with the main man, Tom. So Tom, uh, give a little bit of an intro on who you are, what you do, your background and how you got to this point. No worries, so obviously I'm Tom at TH Detailing. Uh, we've been going since 2018. I started off at the back of my car and working on my dad's drive. Uh, it got to a point where the demand was there, so I brought a van. Uh, I did 12 months working out the back of the van and then I, I realised I could offer so much more, so I got my first unit. Um, after three years in that unit, we moved into this bigger one and I've took staff members on al along the way. Uh, yeah, it's going well. So what got you into detailing? Where was the idea of, oh, I want to get into that kind of thing? So I've always worked in the motor trade since I left school. Started off doing mechanical, then I got a job uh, with a, with a, partner of my auntie at the time, they've since split up, uh, but he, he started, he, he was in a body shop and said I, you know, I need new people to come work for me, so I got a job there and I was doing bits and bobs and that's where I learned to machine polish, and that basically sparked my interest. Uh, I've always wanted a business from a young age, but I yeah. didn't know what in, and didn't know how, how to get there, how to set it up, uh, so yeah, I'd started off doing sort of machine polishing on friends' cars. I did a mate's car for his wedding and did his dad's. And while I was at the wedding, I took a booking in for another car and it just basically spiraled on from there. Then I was getting asked for interior deep cleans, so I brought all the equipment to do interior deep cleans. So it just kind of sparked on from one thing to the other. Yeah, a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a hobby and bit of a pocket money sort of earner, then become a serious side hustle. And then it got to the point where I hated working where I was working and I had a chat with a girlfriend and she just basically said, look, just go full time with, with your, your car cleaning. Uh, and then, yeah, 12 months after being full time, I uh, got the first unit. Two years after that, we took a member of staff on. And then a year after that, we got the keys to this place. Awesome. So what are we doing today? So we're doing a, basically a nice deep clean wash on my car yeah. uh, so what does that entail what products are we going to use so that kind of thing we're going to talk you through how we personally wash a car so uh, in an it's perfect for you to then be able to use this process moving forwards we're going to use all the top spec products that we use obviously you're going to use our equipment and you're going to use our techniques so we'll basically clean the wheels the arches the bodywork uh, everything in between, like your door shuts, your glass, your tyres, and then we'll move on to the interior. I'll show you where we, we personally clean the interior, so we'll do vacuuming, cleaning plastics. Uh, and then the, what we call the finishing touches, which will be the final 10%, that'll make your car look, go from looking, well, that's clean, to, you know, that's clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if anyone else wants to do this, how, how do they get involved? How, how do they... Uh, do this three hour course that we're doing today. There's multiple ways you can get booked in for this. You can visit our website uh, and then it's on our training section on the website. You can give us a call, you can pop in to see us and we're also all over social media as well. So what's your social media just so people can actually find it? If you just type this? TH Detailing into Facebook or Instagram, we're gonna pop up and the same if you type it into Google. 
All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing started because I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing just how clean we can get this car and me. So off camera, we were just having a little chat and you was talking about the three bucket method. Now I've heard of the two bucket method. Explain to me what the three bucket method is. So, so uh, your three buckets, I mean, it's not necessarily a method that you use them all together. It's just that we're going to have three buckets in total. Two buckets are going to be for the wash process, the contact wash, and the wheel bucket is solely going to be for the wheels. And I take it that's so you don't get any other dirt and grit from any of the rest of the car on the wheels. Correct. So yeah, the wheels are always going to be the most dirty. Obviously, Obviously you're going to have brakes. brake dust, you're going to have road tyre, you're going to have rubber coming off the tyres if you drive it hard enough. Uh, yeah, so the wheels are generally the most dirty. Um, so obviously you, you just want a dedicated bucket for your wheels. The, if you haven't got that option and you are lim working with limited buckets, you can empty it out, clean it out, yeah. and then continue using it. But most suppliers now, especially from Jewel, obviously they come with the stickers already on. Yeah. So as you can see, you've got rinse, wash, and wheels. So your rinse bucket's just going to be fresh, clean water. Your wash bucket's going to be fresh, clean water, but with shampoo in. And then your wheel buckets are going to be fresh, clean water with shampoo, but with all your, your wash media for your wheels. Now, I've seen on a few detailing videos, they always do the wheels first. And I was, I was, I say taught, was told that you should work from the, the top down. You can work, from, yeah, you, we do work from the top down, but we start with the wheels first. And why is that? Because I always think, that obviously the cleanest water is going to be there and then the dirt, obviously you've got the wheel bucket but from when I was cleaning back in the day I'd always start from the top down so the wheels are always the dirtiest and that's the the best way. Some people still do wheels last we do it first because it's the most dirty. And it takes more time for the chemicals to penetrate and clean or just, just your way of doing it? Yeah just our way of doing it we, we tend to do the wheels first and that way then the wheels are clean you can carry on with the rest of the vehicle if you were to say clean the paintwork and then start cleaning your wheels, you run the risk of overspray. Right. So you're going to have excess product going on your, your arches, your bumpers, and then the, the risk of dirt going okay. on your bumpers as well when you rinse it off. So if you do the wheels first, all the dirty water and all your overspray is going to go on dirty panels. We're going to put pre-wash over it, rinse that off, and then do our contact wash. Sounds, so, yeah, sounds... Uh... It saves you having to wipe the vehicle again. Yeah wiping a clean panel again that's just got fresh dirt on it i mean it sounds logical when you say it like that to avoid scratch scratches yeah. and swirls okay cool all right let's let's start this uh pre-wash then shall we so obviously we use dual auto care bahama blue really good shampoo and we only really need 15 mil one pump's going to be 30 mil okay out of this so half a pump and then half a pump into there simple as About three quarters with water. We're about to use the pre-wash. So go through the pre-wash, the ratios, uh, and the best formula for that. So this is auto bead heavy dirt in a pump sprayer. Uh, we use a pump sprayer because it's quicker, but obviously you can use a trigger sprayer if you don't have one of these. Uh, and all this is gonna do is basically sit on the panel. We're gonna get it up into the wheel arches. We're gonna put it on the wheels as well. And we're just gonna put it on the lower sections, a sort of waist down. Yeah. Any higher than that, and it's a bit wasted product in my opinion and how long do we do you put it on there or what's the best the best length of time to put it on there so that it, it does its job and normally and around four or five minutes obviously if you're in direct sunlight you need to be a bit more mindful because it will dry quicker we've got an overcast day the temperature's not too hot so we can have it on for sort of three four minutes and that's just going to soak its way in and then allow you to rinse off anything that it's softened up we was just talking off camera and you were saying that um that you need something that's mildly acidic because um, a lot of people say you want it uh, pH neutral balanced uh, so and you were just saying that's not actually technically correct so yeah pH neutral is good but if you've got a slightly dirty car you, you might find that pH neutral ain't gonna have enough bite being citrus based it's slightly acidic it's it's not dangerous acidic uh, it's not like going to the car wash and they're putting it on neat if you've got the correct dilution ratios it's going to be perfectly and safe what is the, the dilution car. ratio for, for that product that you're using off the top of my head, I have no idea. Right, okay. Have to check you you just do it off by, yeah. just because you've done it so many times. Yeah, with the pump sprayer, we tend to just, you know, we've got, yeah, I couldn't tell you, it's just in my head. Okay, fair uh, enough. But yeah, it's, it's normally sort of 10 to 1. Okay. Or less, so you only need a very small amount of product, the rest with water, and it's, that's going to be ample enough for it to do its job. Well, you're saying that um, it's good for ceramic coating because it helps clean the ceramic? 
Yeah, coating. so it will it will because the ceramic coatings can be porous, although they're slick, and they will get clogged, which will then kind of diminish its hydrophobic, its water repellent properties. So it is good to use an alkaline or an acid base pre-wash. Uh, again, if you've got the correct dilution ratios, you're not going to cause any damage. You're actually going to benefit it. Uh, this is slightly acidic, obviously being citrus based, which is lemons, as we know. Yeah. Um, and what that's basically going to do is it's going to have a bit more bite compared to pH neutral, but it's not going to be as aggressive enough that it's going to cause staining or you know damage paint work or remove any protection that you've got on it. Okay. Let's go. Let's get it on. So like extra nice, thin, and even, and we spread up to the wheel arches as well, but a nice sort of even, and you'll see it's clinging to it. What you don't want to do is have it dripping down, right? because it's just going to run on the floor. Yeah. Try and get into the barrels as well. Yeah. It's actually really good for bug splats as well. Yeah, there's bugs all over the front of that car, as you can see. I mean, the other day I was driving and a bug actually hit the windscreen and made me jump. So we tend to do this process when we fill in the buckets up. Yeah. So is that just to give it time to just sink in while the buckets are being Pretty much filled? You're not going to be saving there, time. Yeah, you're not going to be stood here watching it do its thing. You can be cracking on with something else. Just speeding your process up ever so slightly. I mean, from a, obviously when we do it as a business, time's money. Yeah, obviously. So we can be the, the most efficient we can be. Obviously not cutting corners, but if we can speed the process up by doing something else while it's dwelling. It I mean, that sense. citrusy smell is quite strong. As I'm standing here, you get a good waft of it. Yeah. But you won't want to drink it. No. <laughs> like that. So let's leave this on for just a few minutes. Oh, there's a spider. Where are you gone? There you are. So you pre-wash as well. What you can do, you just get it in the door shuts there. I have never cleaned the door shuts. Never. Obviously, you want to be mindful not to spray it into the interior. Yeah. So is this uh, training course that you do, is that starting to become more popular? Yeah. Yeah, it's more, the professional courses are always more popular than the enthusiast level. And that's mostly people that are wanting to do it as a business or that they are doing it as a business and just need a little guidance just to just to improve. We had somebody in a couple of weeks back who did our two day machine polishing course, travelled down from Wales. And he's, uh, he's, on, he's on the right track now to start offering machine polishing and coatings. I've always been a little bit scared of machine polishing because I've heard horror stories about people burning the paintwork and stuff. So I've, never, I've always stayed away from it. It's like everything else though, it's, it's more of a confidence thing. Once you understand what to do and how to do it, not necessarily how to do it, but why you're doing it that way. And you know the, the science behind it. So the, the, the biggest thing with machine polishing is the understanding what's happening and why it's happening rather than how to do it. Yeah. And when you understand that side of it, it's a bit like learning the theory. When you come to actually physically do it, you understand everything, so it then becomes a confidence thing. Yeah. And just fine tuning silly little things like your arm movements and your posture and your working times and stuff like that. So we will do essentially a morning of theory and we cover everything. And then when we get out and start polishing cars, they'll pick the polisher up and it's just then a case of getting over their own anxiety and just having a go. So is that course also with their own car as well, I take it, or? Not normally, we've normally got a demo car. Okay. So a car that we've prepped previously. Uh, we, we, we basically do, we can use their vehicle, uh, but it would need to be prepped to our standards, which if you're doing it sort of as an enthusiast level or as a, a professional that's not quite to our sort of standard it becomes tricky when we polish it so yeah. we, we tend to get a vehicle uh, we'll 
prepare it the day before or at the same time as we're delivering the theory side of it and then when we get it in it's literally where it needs to be to get the best results on it. alloy wheel cleaner thing like, that looked like a, a, a tube cleaner yeah one of those yeah. and within three minutes it started to disintegrate yeah so these are they're the ez ones there are sort of cheaper alternatives that you can buy from china and stuff like that but the the proper ez ones for enthusiast level so washing your car sort of once twice a month will last a few years we tend to get through these quite quickly but we do yeah, volume they, they, of vehicles. Yeah, they do a good job. Uh, they are very good. We've never known them scratch wheels. Uh, a lot of people think the nylon bristles will, but they are actually, very when soft. wet, very, very soft. Uh, the only thing to notice, which is a common fault, is the bong on the end sometimes disintegrates and comes off. Right. And that'll be an exposed metal rod. Yeah. So that's just one thing, but obviously before you use any equipment. Just always have a little look. Check it over anyway. Yeah. Uh, same as these, yeah, that's very similar, but that's for wheel arches. And we've also got the sort of regular wheel brushes. Uh, there is the microfiber alternatives. Okay. And then we've also got your tire brush, which yeah. is, again, nylon, but a bit, bit stiffer. Yeah, uh, I think the, the, the tires can actually take a bit more of a, an aggressive yeah. clean, so. And then you just sort of regular wheel brushes. But we've got various sizes for various wheels and then we've also got wash mitts as well which come in handy for so plenty of different uh, plenty tools of, everything for everything everything yeah <laughs> obviously if you're doing your own vehicle you might only have one or two yeah because we work on that many different various wheel types we've got all various yeah. different makes tools. sense makes sense so what we're going to do with the wheel cleaner just spray it on get right in the barrel Give it a couple of seconds to just soak, and while it's soaking, what I tend to do is get my arch brush and start off at the top. I have never cleaned my never cleaned wheel arches on any car that I've ever had. Because my, my logic on that is, the moment you drive off somewhere, it's dirty straight away, yeah. so... And no one's... Who's looking up with your arches, really? Detailers. Yeah. <laughs> if you, that's the worst thing, is when you, if you go to a show, and someone spent all day cleaning the car and they've not cleaned the wheel arches and everything else is clean, you're going to know it's everything to do it. Especially when it comes to people with a tent, like eyes for detail, like photographers, car yeah. enthusiasts, they will spot it. I mean, a simple rinse out is normally ample. Yeah. But we're detailers, so we like to try and get it as clean go, as we go can. Go a bit further. Like that. So these have got a, a lot of vehicles off fabric and we tend to scrub it with that and then blast it with a pressure washer. And you'll see the water hitting it and as it's dripping out, it'll get from dirty to clear. Yeah. So that's a good indication that that's, that's, that's clean. now clean. Obviously onto the wheel faces. So a good tip is to obviously get that nice and wet before you touch it especially if you've got gloss black wheels yeah and you put a dry brush on it you are going to put more in it but some brushes aren't going to get in right into the corners yeah that's why we've got very different so what we just you said glass black wheels are they really hard to keep keep clean are they are they the worst wheels to, to work on or so when it comes to colors we're only working with the top layer which is the lacquer a lot yeah. of the time Darker colours will show up the contrast more, which is why black cars will always look worse when they're sort of swelled and scratched and dirty. Yeah. It's because of the contrast of the paint behind it is going to highlight the dirt more. So if we look at Dylan's car over there, the white one. Just move that around. 
I mean, that's, 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 yeah, that's ceramic coated, but you can see the wheels are slightly dirty. Yes. If that was a black car, you'd see all the dirt up the side of it. Ah, okay. And, and all the swells and stuff as well, but because it's white. Yeah. You, you can't get that contrast behind it, so. But there's a, there's a myth that you can't get light coloured cars shiny. And yeah. We're not dealing with it. We're not aiming to, we're working with the top layer. Yeah. So which is the lacquer, which is the bit that we're aiming to work at, uh, to work with and get shiny. So yeah, we, we I, I tend to use a mitt because as you can see, it's a lot quicker. Yeah. But using a brush is going to get you more likes on Instagram, but take you a lot longer. My wife has a Fiat 500 here. She has like the really split uh, alloy wheels and they're an absolute pain to clean because one, my hands are too big to get into the little grooves. Yeah. And two, it takes just, just so much longer to clean. Uh, do you ever get some wheels and you're just like, do you know what? I really, really don't want to work on these just because they're so, so much of a pain. Yeah, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the electric cars tend to have funky designs and whilst they look good, they're a nightmare to, to clean. Uh, ceramic coatings are going to make it easier to clean. They're not going to make it bulletproof or, you know, stay clean forever. Yeah. But the, the nature of the coatings being slick and hydrophobic, it will repel a lot of dirt. Um, so yeah, it'll make it easier for you to clean. Obviously with your that brush as well, if you've got a tight spot, you can get in yeah. with that as well. If you're limited on tools. Obviously these are primarily for the barrels, so we tend to start at the top. And you want to work it at angles you don't just want to go backwards and forwards because you're going to miss behind the spokes yeah and obviously give it a dunk in between and what that's going to do is going to take all the dirt off and put some fresh suds on it for you Another random question that's just popped into my mind. So you know, um, the wheel weights? Yep. I know some cars now have the wheel weights that are in the barrels. Do you find that a bit more challenging because uh, you might potentially push those weights off? If uh, a decent tire fit, it will clean the wheel before they put the new weights on. So, there's, uh, yeah, we've not had any instances where we've knocked them off. A lot of this stuff is very delicate, light like cleaning. Uh, we're not going to get too close with the pressure washer, it's going to blast them off. Yeah. And these, unless you're directly aiming for it, aren't going to knock them off. Yeah, we, we've never come across that, to be honest. But a decent tyre fitter will essentially clean where the weight needs to go and, and then stick, stick the wheel weights on. on. A lot of the time they'll wire brush it. Yeah. Uh, or they'll use. They've got something what they call bead sealer or brake cleaner. Um, not bead sealer, sorry. Um, oh, what's the proper name for it? Buff sole is what we, because I used to do tyre fitting. And yeah. that's basically a, uh, it's, it's meant to clean tyres before you put puncher patches on, uh, but it is really good at removing dirt from alloy wheels as well. Cool. So. And then a bit that a lot of people miss is the wheel bolts. Yeah. Which admittedly you might not get squeaky clean because they are exposed metal, but cleaning where they sit as well. That's always uh, always very noticeable when people have cleaned wheels and they've not cleaned the barrels and they're not cleaned in these recesses here as well. That's the first thing that stands out to me. I mean, some wheel designs just don't allow it though, do they? Yeah, so. some wheel designs are really tricky. And like I said, some of the electric ones where the wheels make part of the aerodynamics. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to limit where air can get trapped. And they are very difficult to work with. But you can get cotton buds and swabs yeah. and all sorts to get in. It depends on 
therefore you want to take it. So we tend to clean the wheels while the snow foam's dwelling, which is the next stage. Again, that's going to save us a bit of time. Yeah. Or we tend to do two wheels, rinse the foam off, carry on with the next two. Uh, it does speed things up ever so slightly. Right, now my turn to have a go. Let's see if you've uh, been watching. So, right into the barrels as well. There you are. There we go. Pleased? Yeah. What would you give that? 10 out of 10. <laughs> Surprising the amount of dirt that actually came out. Yeah. Happy? Happy, yes. What do we think? Good. So when you do it methodically, yeah. it doesn't seem like a chore to do it, does it? No. The order to do it. Do. And do you let that sit for a little while or do you just... Uh... Yeah, sort of five, five minutes, six minutes-ish. Uh, obviously, again, if it's a hot day, it's going to dry. Uh, if it's raining, the rain's going to take it off, so... Yeah. Decent snow foam should have done its job within sort of four or five minutes. Uh, the trick is to not put too much on. If it's too thick, you're wasting product. Yeah. It's the bit that's touching the panel that's doing the job. And the idea is it's going to cling on the panel, pull the dirt away and drip onto the floor. So if the foam's dripping on the floor, bringing the dirt off, it's doing its job. If it's thick like shaving foam, you've just wasted your time and your money. A lot of people think the thicker the snow foam, the better. It's the reverse. Would you say that, um, you know you've got these things that, that say that it's a contactless wash, you don't have to, you know, once you, you put it on, you leave it and then, um, you know, hose it back down. Do you reckon they're any good or would you prefer It depends, to... yeah. I mean, I know Waterglim have got a system. I've never personally used it. Um, I think that depends on how dirty the vehicle is to begin with. But uh, if for it to be contactless, it's going to be very strong dilution. Uh, or, or quite high or low pH. Yeah. So, yeah, it's there's no substitute for a proper contact wash, in my opinion. I yeah. mean, with our with our van that's ceramic coated, um, once a week when we've got a car on the wash bay, the van will be there. We'll snow foam it, rinse it off. It gets rid of about 70, 80% of the dirt. It just looks presentable. Yeah, but and once a that's month, basically busy, isn't it? Yeah, once a month we'll give it a proper contact wash so it is clean, but yeah. in between it just gets those sort of mini daily, daily rubbish yeah, it, just, yeah just to remove anything that's kind of making it look messy uh it's a workhorse at the end of the day well it's same when it comes to used cars you're not going to keep them clean 100 yeah. percent of the time so your ceramic coating is going to make that process easier when it is wash time and you will get longer in between uh but yeah cont contact washing for me is always always advised even if even if your car's coated and you've got a build up of dirt we, we have had people say, car's got a bit of dirt on it, do you recommend just no foam rinse it off? And I'll always say no contact washing. If you want it squeaky clean, contact wash it. Yeah. So when it comes to snow foam, I tend to start this corner, because my jet wash is on the other corner. Obviously, yeah. if you're doing it at home, I try and do it in one complete swoop. Uh, that's because I use this multiple times a day, and it's like using a knife and fork. But yeah. I tend to do it bottom to top. Reason being is the bottom sections are dirtier, so, so there's no foam. Extra bit of time to, to clean. A extra time to dwell. You can do it top to bottom, or you know, however you want to do it. But me personally, I do bottom to top. This will go on the wheels. There's no point trying to avoid them, so we'll spray it on the wheels as well. And that, if there's any sort of trap dirt that's dripping down from your wheel arches or on your on your rims that you've missed, this is going to disperse that anyway. So. And then when it comes to doing the top, sort of point it down, and you're getting all your or, 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 or your, your skull runs. panel and where your rear window sits and everything like that as well. And obviously within the fuel flap as well. Yeah. 
So what a lot of people do at this stage now is they get a brush and they go around all the edges. Yeah. But technically there's still dirt on the car. And that'll be just... You'll be scratching that around because I've made that mistake before. Now that spent two hours polishing out all these Marvin marks that I've put in. Luckily it was a car of my, my own car. So you'll see when it starts sort of clinging but struggling to drip, that's when it's pretty much time to come off. Yeah. All we're doing as well is all the edges and stuff, we're just getting a bit of water in there just to blast any dirt out. Obviously you don't want to be yeah. super close. But you want to be close enough that it's shifting the foam and the dirt, because you can shift the foam without touching the dirt yeah. as well. Obviously, when it comes to your fuel flap, make sure it's yeah. screwed in. Don't want to get water in your fuel. Nope. <clears throat> Same with the edges. Blast them out, but don't be too close and don't put too much water in there, because the last thing you want to do is fill a door card up with water. They are designed to take water down the glass and it'll drip down the back of the door and come out holes at the bottom. <laughs> Now this is probably going to be sacrilege, but when I was a youngster, how bad is it using washing up liquid on your car to wash it? Full of salt, so they're quite abrasive. So the idea behind washing up liquid is, is that it's got salt in it to break up the greases on the, the pots and the pans, yeah. the cutlery, the plates. So they are, they're essentially sandpaper. So it can put very sort of fine scratches in. Not only that is it will it makes it hydrophilic because it leaves a film behind. Hy hydrophilic means that the water will stick to it. Yeah. Hydrophobic means it's going to repel it. So a lot of people seem to think that washing up liquid can remove waxes and sealants. It doesn't. It sits on the surface, giving you the impression that there's no protection on. Uh, but yeah, washing up liquid was, I'd say it's probably one of the most popular car shampoos. Yeah. But it shouldn't be. Right, so now we're at the stage where we've done the pre-wash, snow foam, What's next? Contact wash. Cool. So two bucket method. The bit which confuses a lot of people. Some people say it's unnecessary, but we recommend it. All right, so you've got your, your wash bucket, which is full of your, your shampoo and your water, and you've got your rinse bucket, which is full of your fresh water. So the idea behind this is, is you take the soapy water on the car, you remove the dirt from the panel, put it in your rinse bucket, and then you repeat the process again by going back to your soapy bucket and repeat that process. So you and in the rinse bucket you've got the grit guard? There's grit guards in all three of the buckets. So if for whatever reason it gets missed on the rinse bucket, you've got that little extra protection on your, on your wash bucket as well. But yeah, if, if you're methodical, yeah. you won't make that mistake. Um, but yeah, re really, really easy process. So you wash me clean, straight into there. You can push it on the grit guard if you want. And all you're going to do is bring your soapy water onto the panel. And I tend to do straight lines. Yeah. Just like that. And because of the size of this wash mitt and how much water it holds, when you get to a fresh panel or, or yeah. glass, flip it over. I tend to just pull up the, the wiper blades anyway when I'm washing the car just. Yeah, I tend to just lift them up and plonk them back down, reason being some of the more sportier cars where they've got different shapes or them quite s sleek and low if you lift it up it catches on the oh. on the bonnet Yeah. so I just out of habit I just lift them up enough to but yeah you can if you want lift them up the thing is as well if you've got them up and you hit it with a pressure washer it can straight back down yeah Again, I'm not, like I say, I'm not too precious about my car, so... Uh, you would be if you had to spend 500 quid on a windscreen. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I really would. <laughs> you push it on the grit guard, push everything out. Yeah. You can scrape it on as well, like a cheese grater. And then back in your, in your wash bucket, and you've got that fresh, fresh solution going straight back on the, on the bodywork again. So the way you wash your cars, do you, the way I wash my cars, I do all the top first, then one side, then the other. But I, I suppose today, because I'm doing it as well, we you're doing do half, one side yeah. and then do the other side. Pretty much. I mean, sometimes I'll do a complete side, 
grab the bucket and the other side depends where the sun's landing yeah but yeah a lot of the time you do the top horizontal services first so say horizontal but you know yeah your roof your windscreen your bonnet in your case tailgate and then basically work your way down or you can sort of start sort of one side do the one side pick your buckets up walk around to the next side and do that it's yeah you'll kind of find your own rhythm way. yeah uh, there's no sort of wrong way to do it um but yeah as long as you start top to bottom that's the that's the ideal method because it's the same way as pushing dirty dirt up the panel to yeah. then rinse it back down again it's yeah counterproductive <laughs> it's kind of a a big car but not at the same time yeah it's really bizarre it's quite a lot of surface area yeah so when it comes to wipers a lot of people uh wing mirrors sorry fold them in and get the edges of the plastic you know that's never a thing i've ever done cleaning behind the ears yeah effectively yeah. never done that because if you've got the car that's got electric wing mirrors yeah and you lock the keys you wash the car you lock it you walk off and you've got green all around there where you've missed yeah. When you get to your mates down the pub and say, oh, I've cleaned my car, they come out and go, you know, you've missed that bit. Well, you see, that's people who are posh. I'm not posh, <laughs> so my car doesn't have electric folding wing mirrors. I have, I have to do that uh, by hand, so, yeah. You know, and another, another thing to show the image of the broke petrol head, I can't afford electrically operated wing mirrors. Not yet. <laughs> Same with the door handles, you can open them ever so slightly, just to get in round where the seals are. Right, so I guess it's my turn to do my side. It is. You got it. Yeah. So, so straighten your in into the roots. rinse. Try and sort of every panel. Yeah. Either flip the mitt. So when you say do the roof, you get to the windscreen, flip it over. Yeah. And then once you've done the windscreen, pull it off, bang it in your rinse. Same when you come to do the side. So argument's sake now, you could do, do this quarter panel and then flip it over and do the rear bumper. Yeah. Well, if your car's noticeably dirty, flip it over in the middle of a panel. Yeah. So, nothing to note when you get to the bottom as well. I sometimes ditch about there. Yeah. And then flip the mitt because that section there could be quite dirty, especially if you put in your, your hand underneath it there. If that makes sense. Yeah. So obviously that's where the tyres are kicking up. So. You've missed half the rear bumper. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to it. Yeah. Do, do, do it to sort it. of panel at a time. So complete one panel, move on to the next. Because otherwise you lose that rhythm then and you're backwards and forwards and then you're like, have I done that bit? Have I done, you know, have I missed that? Right, there we go. So I've seen that before as well. Somebody will do a roof, then they'll move on to a door. Yeah. Then they'll move on to the back door, then they'll do the bonnet, and it's like, well, hang on a sec, you're just zigzagging around the car. It's taking you longer to do. So if you start literally there, work your way down. Get the uh, catch. And the same when you come to your number plate, get your fingers right up by the uh, number plate lights. And then watch your fingers on your tow bar because that's what you want to do is put it out or smack your shin off it. I've already done that. I've, yep. got a, I've actually got a dent in my shin because of that tow bar. And yeah, now I've got a dent in my shin for it. So yeah, that was fun. You automatically remember it. Today. Oh yeah. Once, once you, you get some pain from it. Ooh, yuck. See what I mean? Yes. That's seven years worth of grime in there because I've never done that before. That's it. Same when you get to that front bump, obviously get in between all the grills and stuff. Yeah. Uh, watch your fingers on them. Because some of the then plastic, especially if they become dislodged, they're quite sharp. Right, there we go. Happy? Ah, yes. Don't think I missed anywhere. We'll soon find out. Yeah. <laughs> So what's that? It's basically a spray on sealant. So it's going to add a bit of short term protection on it. It's going to bead really well. 
it's going to allow us to dry it quicker as well. So it just goes on with the foam lance, it dwells for five minutes and you rinse it off. And you'll, you'll notice the difference now, the water's quite flat, yeah. sticking to it. When this goes on, it'll bead, so Straight it'll become off. water repellent. It's also going to make it look a bit shiny as well. But this stuff goes on top to bottom. Top to bottom. You can go on the wheels and glass as well. And how long would you say that lasts on a car generally? How long would you say that would last on a, on a car? They say 12 weeks, but obviously if you put it on and didn't wash your car for two months, it's probably going to fail. Yeah. If you sort of clean it regularly, you'll get the whole 12 weeks out of it. When it goes on a car that's protected, it struggles to stick to it, look. Yeah, beads off straight away. So instead of sitting on there, it's literally just beading up and coming off straight away. You can see yeah. there it's beading off, but this one ain't probably ain't gonna bead. And it beads. Well it's water repellent. Yeah. To some extent. So you can see it beading up on it already. Yeah. You'll see as soon as the water hits it, it basically activates it and yeah. it'll just it'll just bead off. It's quite a weird product. <laughs> I mean the sun that you spray on it comes off straight away. This particular one because it's more polymer. You spray it, you have to leave it to, to basically start bonding, then rinse it off. Yeah, you can see there, look. And as you see, that water literally just running straight off. That water just literally off. beading off. What you can also do is dry a car with water. Okay. So you're basically taking advantage of the, the coating's hydrophobic properties. Just putting a blanket of water on it. I'm going to remove all of it, but as you can see, it's removed most. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> see how that just literally just runs all the way off. So here's a rather random question. Does water temp aid in cleaning cars? Because when I was, again, younger, I used to use warm water when I used to wash the cars, and now it's just, you know, cold water. I think the, the technology's moved on with a lot of products, and it's obviously more practical to use cold water. Yeah. Because uh, Unless you're very fortunate, you won't have an heated outdoor tap. Um, I've never trialled it, I've always used cold. I mean, in the winter, I have boiled the kettle and stuck that in the bucket, it just so my hands don't freeze. freeze yeah. But yeah, uh, I've never noticed any appreciable difference. Any, any drastic difference when doing it that way. I think in a foam lance, it might, because obviously it's better to do the washing up with warm, warm hot water, water yeah. than it is cold, but. 
We're not talking about washing up liquid, we're talking about car shampoo, so yeah. slightly different ingredients. Uh, there's probably some scientific detail Somewhere. geek out there that'll be able to answer it, but... Well, if you are that geek, let me know in the comments if... Uh, let let me know indeed, as well. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that is indeed true, that, you, that there's any difference between using hot water, warm water, as opposed to just plain old cold water. Because I'd, I'd like to know. a massive thank you and TH Detailing for giving me more knowledge on how to keep my car nice and clean and products and uh, processes and how to make it look as good as it now does because this is the cleanest it's ever been since I've, uh, since I've owned it and uh, once again if someone wants to uh, do the same course or want to get in touch with you for any work uh, where they find you again social media and on our website so just search TH Detailing and we'll, we'll definitely pop up Awesome. Again, thank you very much and uh, I'll see you again. See you later. So guys, I just want to say a massive thank you to Tom and TH Detailing again uh, for the awesome course that they delivered. If you want to get involved, I will leave a link down in the description box below. Um, they're in the West Midlands, Starbridge area, so if that's something that you want to do, uh, get, get involved. And uh, yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed recently. I've had a, a nice little run of new subscribers, so welcome. Welcome to the family, welcome to the journey, welcome to the community. And if you haven't already and you're new here, please do go ahead because the more you do, the more things I can do and the more content I can bring you and the more fun we can have together. So yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you again to Tom at TH Detailing. I really, really enjoyed it. Learned a lot. My car has never looked so good. And until next time, there we go. Get some nice light on me. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace.